I'm on. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the RLP show Friday night edition. Woo, woo. Hey, everybody coming on. Hello, hello. This is something like I can't recall the last time I have uh, done a live on a Friday night. I never am live Friday night. <clears throat> hey, Tanya. Hey, Boo. Hey, Kevin. Hello, Toxic247. That's not a very good name. Ooh. <laughs> uh let's get straight to it right hey girl lily billy 1985 the queen of cascade bj swan hello as you're coming on everyone i am kennedy t lanise 11 hello hello everyone welcome 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 maureen hi baby christina michelle hello rose dolino official rose dolan official i'm trying to say these names right stack me ball 44 hello i am anja rose Hello, love you, Auntie. Mm -hmm. Love you too, sweetheart. Perry girl, hello. Miss Wheaton, hello. Hello, everyone. So I'm just coming on just for a couple minutes. I'm about to uh, wait for our first guest to come on. We're going to jump right in to our first question and our first guest as soon as I see her on here. Pretty brown eyes 07. Hello, show enough. Hello. Bosina Alameo. Look beautiful, Rebecca. Thank you, sweetheart. All right, it's Friday night, TGIF. Okay, Kevin says, while well, I'm waiting on our guest to come on, how, how do I get my woman to not feel offended about weight? I find her attractive, but I know she would be sexy at a smaller size. Kevin, that is a very, very touchy subject. It is so difficult. Uh, was she the size she is now when you met her? That would be my first question. Uh, if she's ever been the smaller size would be my next question. Does she want to be a smaller size is another question. If you can't find her sexy at the size she is or if she's that size when you met her or if you're not finding constructive ways to help her get healthier on, you know, together as a couple then it might be time for you to find someone else. Because if you can't love her, you know, for where she's at, and, and especially if she was that, if she's the same size as when you met her, it's really not fair to say, okay, I need her to, I want her to lose weight because she would be sexier. That's really not fair. That's like her saying, I want you to be two inches taller. Or I want you to make $50,000 a year more. Or I want you to grow a goatee or a beard and you don't naturally grow a goatee or a beard. Or I wish you were dark skin or I wish you were light skin or I wish you look like this or I wish. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, you have to think about you know, the reality of your relationship. And I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm just asking you some questions to help you really think about it. <clears throat> or there you go, show enough said, or three inches longer. You would be sexier if you had a bigger peen. I mean, that's a fair assessment. You might be sexier if you had some more muscles. I don't know what you look like, Kevin. You know what I mean? Like in relationships, I think sometimes... You know, we, I, I don't want to say it's superficial, right? We want to be attracted to our partners. But if you were already with her and she's look like how you look, she looks the same as when you met her, then I would say it's not fair. You know, anyway. Uh, let me see if I've got my first guest. Candon. Candon, let's see. I don't see her on yet. Anybody else have any questions while we're waiting on our first guest? Anybody else have any questions? You can put it into the question box. Yeah, Lily Billy says, let's go to the gym together. Oh, I made us some protein shakes, babe. Let's do this. Uh, you know, weight loss protein shakes together. We have two emails that came in. Ashley just messaged me. Let me see. 
All right. Oh, I just saw somebody say she's Ailey. Oh, I'm Megan. Haley says I'm Megan. Okay. Um, what did you say, sweetheart, Ashley? Miko, the author, says, I've been single since 2011, no sex since 2013, and that uh, now that I'm ready, nothing is happening. Do you have any suggestions? There's a lot of variables that come into play with something like that, sweetheart. Like, because you say that now you're ready, nothing's happening. What does that mean? You're ready for what? Have you been dating um, in 2000, since 2011, have you been getting to know people, but just being abstinent? Like what exactly has been going on in this last 11 years? No six, sex since 2013. So in the last nine years, no sex. Um, so what's been going on in those years that now all of a sudden you're saying you're ready, but now nothing's happening. Are you dating? Are you on dating apps? Are you getting to know people? Are you learning how to date? Uh, Girl Perfect What's Good says, how do you know if your standards are unrealistic? If your standards keep you single, if nobody you meet meets your standards, if you, the things you like don't like you, if you look around and are realistic about the people you see who are in relationships and you don't feel like those people are good enough for you or that you don't want the types of relationships you see around you and those are healthy relationships, but there's things about them you say, oh no, I could never, right? Like sometimes we have to get realistic about what people, who, what people bring to the table. People are human. Nobody's going to be perfect. If you're asking for things that you don't bring to the table, that's another sign that you might be being unrealistic. That in today's standards of dating, you know, you need to be, at least be showing up saying, I want what I bring to the table. I'm trying to be at least what I'm asking for. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so that, yeah, those are just some of the signs. Oh, I sent in a question as Megan just for privacy. Okay, gotcha. Oh, I see it. Okay, you said, so um, Megan is, is sending a question and she says, I'm hoping to seek some advice surrounding a relationship I'm currently in. Um, I have a boyfriend who is a wonderful man. We've been dating for one and a half years. He is kind, generous, humble, ambitious, self-reflective, emotionally intelligent, hardworking, and the list goes on. I have some hesitations about being with him. When I met him, I had just broken up with my ex-fiance who I've been with for four years. Um, I wasn't ready to be in a relationship, but COVID had just begun and all the restaurants and bars were closed. So I was stuck in the house and I couldn't go out and do the single thing. So I turned to hobbies, self-help and dating apps. I met several wonderful men during that time. I was upfront and told them I wasn't ready for a serious relationship. About two months later, I met the man that I'm currently dating. We hit it off pretty quickly, but I was pretty adamant about not getting into a relationship. We continued to see each other and didn't become serious until about six months in. Um, I'm about to move and we have talked about him coming with me. I want him to come, but if I'm honest, I don't feel ready. Moving in together is a huge step. I just don't feel like I've been single long enough. Um, I'd want to heal after the four-year relationship and get to know myself more. I just don't feel ready to make such a huge commitment. It's hard because I want to be ready as I really love this man and see the potential in him, but I also don't want to force it. I know I wasted a lot of time being with the guy that wasn't for me, but I was just doing what I thought was the right thing. There was a lot of pressure to go to college and marry a nice guy. I knew he wasn't the one, but I continued to date him anyway, as I was afraid I wouldn't find anyone better and didn't want to disappoint my parents. Now I'm almost 30, have an amazing man, uh, but I just can't fight the feeling that I'm not there yet. In your videos, you both talk a lot about how rare good people are. I am so grateful I met someone, but I also don't want to have him move if I'm not 100% sure he's the guy. I'm getting older, so should I just bite the bullet and go for it, or should I give myself more time to heal and find myself? I appreciate any advice you can give. Have a great day. I also think it's worth mentioning that I, I've done a lot of the work you mentioned on your show. I was in therapy for about four years. I've also done group therapy, read a lot of self-help books, and I'm currently in a group that practices conflict resolution skills. I love bettering myself every day. Okay, I love it. All right, so Megan, here's the thing, sweetheart. I, 
it sounds to me like your gut is telling you you're not ready for this relationship. You're someone who's doing a lot of the work. So you're becoming self-aware. You've been in therapy. You're in group. You do all this work on yourself. Your gut is telling you that this isn't it or that you're not ready, but it is fear. It sounds like it's fear that you don't want to miss out on something or that you're getting older, right? So it's like fear causing you to doubt your gut instinct. I don't suggest that anybody move in with each other, like, like real talk. I'm not suggesting you guys go live together. It sounds like you're making a move. He would come have to come be with you. He's going to come move in with you. You've been together a year and a half. Just because you're about to be 30, just because you guys, he's a good guy, that's not enough. I think you need to follow your first instinct where you're saying, if you're not 100% sure, you don't want this man to move for you and then you get moved and now it's not working and you're not happy. And you mentioned you feel like you're really not 100% over your ex or that you didn't really take enough time to get over your ex and you're so in other words all the signs are pointing that spirit connection holy spirit alignment your gut is saying no but you are trying to override that in order to try to make it work with a good guy sounds like you've met a really good guy um but even if he is a good guy and you're not 100% over your ex, you can hurt him really badly by not being honest with yourself about where you're at and what you're feeling if you keep kind of let this keep going and ignoring your gut and your signs that you're not ready or this isn't it. Does that make sense? So if I were you, I would slow down. I most definitely would not be encouraging him to move with you. And if you guys continue to date after you move and things progress and you keep working on self because now you got a little bit of distance with your move and you keep working on yourself and you come to a place of peace, you come to a place of peace and you are certain and you know for sure that he's the one and that now you can move forward and the distance gives you that clarity or meet or forms a closer, stronger bond between the two of you, then you really know. Marriage is something that is so serious. And once you've made that decision, it is something that entangles your life with another human being. It is a huge decision. You need to be going into that decision with a hundred percent certainty. You need to be making that decision from a place of peace, a place of alignment, a place of knowing for certain that this is your person and that you love them and that there is no, nobody else you want. There's no second guessing. It's too huge. This, you marry someone, you're sleeping with them. This couldn't be the father of your children. You have children and now that person, you are forever connected with this person and there is no backing out. You have to co-parent and raise children together, which is forever. Even as adult children, you're forever connected to their other parent. It's a huge and very important decision, okay? So I would say slow down, I would say no, I would say give it more time. Don't rush, okay? And do some meditation, some prayer, some journaling, and ease these fears you have about feeling like you should be ready, all the shoulda, woulda, coulda stuff. You're putting pressure on yourself, and you don't need to do that. All right, Candon is on. Let's see if I can invite Candon to join us. Hey, Candon. I'm trying to bring... You're welcome, sweetheart. You're welcome. All right, I'm trying to bring Candon on. Let me see, I'm trying to click on you, babe. Can you hit the little uh, request to join Candon so that I'm able to actually bring you on? What's this one? Invite to join. Hold on, let me find you. 
C A N D E N Candon. All right. I think I did it. Let's see. Candon. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing just lovely, TGIF. Your brows look fabulous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Did you do microblading? I, no, no. I just, no, they look them. great. I don't let people touch them. I just let them grow naturally. I pluck them and I pencil them. They look really fantastic. Really, really good. They look like they're microbladed. You know, I got microblading, honey, because I have to do these videos all the time. And nobody got time to be trying to paint on eyebrows every day. Okay? You no. You always look great. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go over here to your, your inbox, to your question, and pull up what you was talking about. Okay. Um, let you me want me see. to let read me find for you? Uh, you want to read it? I can read it. No, I, let me read it because I got to be able to read it and understand everything you're saying. So I'll read it so everybody can hear. And that way I get an understanding too. Okay, here's my coaching question. She says, Dear Rebecca, um, I feel like I'm the girl who's always desired but never chosen. Men seem to think I'm fun to be around, find me attractive, and generally enjoy my company, but I'm not sure they are taking me seriously. There's been several instances where men, men will use me for emotional support and or excitement, but then I find out later that they are already involved in a relationship or they just don't want to commit. It just seems like I'm some sort of temporary escape for them. I'm not sure if I'm giving off an I don't need a man vibe or if this is just how a lot of men operate, but I'm pretty tired emotionally. It could be that I'm often approached by younger men. I'm 37, but most of the men think I'm younger and are around 28 to 35. I'm also not involved sexually with any of them. I think I have a lot of really great wife-like qualities, and I know God has not forgotten about me, but what, if anything, sh should I be doing to be proactive in my love life? Um, I value and desire marriage so much. I enjoy many aspects of my singleness, but I don't want to be single much longer. At this point, I'd like to find an amazing man to love and plan a family with. I would appreciate any advice. Thank you. All right. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Please help. Do, me. <laughs> okay, baby. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you. Do you take yourself serious when it comes to your intentions about wanting to be a wife? Like wanting to be married. Do you go into dating situations and meeting people really looking at them seriously, like, are you husband material? Like or do you go in, I'm getting a whole kind of like fun, you're, you're bubbly, you got a really like young energy, and I feel like you, I don't know, tell me. Are you kind yeah. of very casual and easygoing? Tell me about how you meet people and how you interact with people when you first meet them. You know what? I am pretty casual and easygoing because I used to be really intense. And that's... Okay. Like <laughs> that wasn't really <laughs> that wasn't get that wasn't getting you there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't getting me there, and I was frustrated, you know. So yeah. the process you weren't having fun, right? So now, yeah, I I I tend to be a lot more easygoing, um, and I don't I don't sh I, I don't compromise my boundaries, but or my standards, but I often will give people a lot more room to show me you know, who they are. And I just, I don't like go in with like the deepness in the beginning. Okay. So it sounds like you used to be really serious and not fun. You realized you were coming off as a buzzkill and this is too much for strangers that you're meeting. You're like, okay, killing the vibe. You are too intense. And so then you did some correction and you became more fun but it sounds like it's not now time to find the happy medium, mm -hmm. like that middle ground now where you are, you're still your fun self and you're, you're, you can be fun and cool, but it's also being really straightforward and saying, I'm, I'm dating with a purpose. Like 
I'm I'm looking to be married. I I mean, I've dated. I have had friends. That's cool. But I'm looking to really start my life with someone. And I want a life partner to build legacy, buy property, whatever your goals and your dreams are for the rest of your life. You want someone to do that with. And there's nothing wrong with now. I don't know if you if this would come easy to you, but I, you've probably heard me say in a video, like my first conversation with Carrie, I said, you know, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I've done dating. I've got friends, you know, it's cool, but I'm now at a place in my life where I am dating with purpose and I really would like to have my life partner. So I'm just letting you know, I'm dating from a place of very, being very intentional about that because I want to be married and I want to build a life with someone. And I'm not saying that's you, at all. I don't know you. Obviously, that would be crazy, right? I don't know you. But I am saying that's where I'm at in life. So you will know where I'm at. So you don't waste my time. Mm. And I don't waste yours. Like, I don't want to waste your time either. If you out here just for fun, fun, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. But that's just not where I'm at in life. And if that scares anyone away, Candon, mm -hmm they weren't going to be serious anyway. You're not saying like, I want to marry you and I, you're on your first date. You're not saying that. Yeah. But you are just letting people know or letting potential love interests know that, look, the guy's just saying, she's pretty. <laughs> like, look, they're like, okay, who's this? <laughs> Kish Israel's like, she's pretty. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Yes. Becca, and Lily, oh, this is a good one. Lily Billy 1985 says, date men 45 to 55 years old, they will be more serious. She's making a good point. So you like the young, fun guys. Okay. You yeah. said that you're dating men 28 to 35, and you are 37. Mm -hmm. My oldest son is 28. Um, he is got a girlfriend uh, that he was dating for about a year. They kind of had an oops, and now I have a grandbaby, Olivia. <laughs> and uh, he's 28 right now, and I would say he, like, before this point, and, and, and Olivia's rocking his life, right, <laughs> rocking his world, like, he's like, oh, daddy now, like, this is serious, I'm grown, like, oh my god, mom, I'm grown, right, like, 28 is not, they not ready for you, darling, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, you... I would say 55 is pushing it because you do you want children? I absolutely want children. And, you know, I, I do think I probably need to date a little bit older. Older men, the younger men approach me all the time. So I got to get into that range where I'm kind of like in that 40s. I would like to date people that are, you know, maybe 40. I, I think that would be a good age. Yeah. But you're right. I think what happened was I was too intense for a relationship I wanted to be in that didn't work out. And I think I've kind and because of my work, which I do a lot of teaching in um, abstinence with women and ministry and stuff like that. And people know that I don't want to seem like over the top to men initially, because they already may get the impression that like, Oh, she's no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mind that they don't, you know, they think they take me serious. They, they, I think they should respect me, but I don't want to like, I think I've just been maybe erroring on the side of like too easy going. Cause I never had that, that conversation that you told me about with Carrie. I've never said that on the first conversation. I just didn't think yeah. to say that. I just always was like, yeah. so many people and then, say, oh, just be easy, be easy. And you're, don't be and a Chandler, The other thing I would do is I would not talk about abstinence at all. Yeah, no, I don't usually. I don't. Good. Because I just believe everyone should be abstinent. Like, that's not even, shouldn't even be a topic of discussion because it should be off the table for the first 90 days that you're getting to know someone because these are strangers. Like, like, I know I'm getting older, y'all. I know, I know, I know. But the thing is, is with the world we now live in, sexually transmitted diseases, mm -hmm. mental illness. Well, I mean, I just don't think that in 2022, I'm advising any single people to be jumping into bed with each other. And men, I'm talking about you too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of very mentally ill women 
and mentally ill men that do not come off as mentally ill when you they you meet their representative mm -hmm. but i mean at the end of the day you start getting to know these jokers and these people crazy <laughs> like so i don't even think that abstinence even needs to be the type of issue that it used to be where it's like whereas women are trying to be abstinent and keep that off the table no fellas y'all need to be keeping your peen to yourself too because in this world honey you be you done caught going up here and caught a demon not no std you going to hit a sexually transmitted devil is what you will catch dealing with these crazy folks out here in these streets um i mean i know i'm just saying right i mean candon for real like no, that's serious. And you don't even really know the people. I have friends that I, I just now knew them, knew them, knew them after a year of being their friend or seeing them through these different seasons. So, you know, I, I, that's why I'm very, I'm very adamant and passionate about that. So you telling the truth. I'm, exactly. listening, I'm listening to you. <laughs> yeah, he says, and Kish Israel says, if he like you, he's going to wait. That's just real talk. Now, here's the other thing. Now, let's talk about something else that could also be going on. Okay. I think there's a subconscious mindset or thought process when you are an abstinent woman or man that you somehow have to overcompensate with personality or making yourself interesting so you may try a little too hard and the energy, like, remember, we know we are spiritual creatures, spiritual beings. And the way that that like kind of overly trying to be cool, trying to be funny, trying to be, you know, just easygoing, doing too much of that. Guess what that comes off as, Camden? Mm hmm. Thirsty. <laughs> Thirsty. Desperate, needy, fake, fake, um, something a little just off where it's like, she cool, but I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm, I'm not like quite as just like into her as I thought I would be. She's c good people, but I'm not attracted to her like that because you're maybe being a little bit too, uh, in you know if we're leaning in they lean back men want to lean in which is why as women we need to lean back just a little bit it doesn't mean that we don't show interest but we're not leaning in like oh darling don't you want me no it's like <laughs> leaning back a little bit and let them be show a little bit of you know the chase a little bit more the challenge right um yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. Hold on. Now, hold on, Candon. All right. Now, Holy Spirit. Candon, mm -hmm. do you believe that you are a catch? I do. I really do. I really, I know I am, Rebecca. I okay. Am. It's just, I think what happens is some discouragement can come from time to time because I'm not seeing what it is that I feel like would be and equal for me and and I'm a, and I am I am not the the girl that's like you got to have this 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 I'm not that girl I'm just like I can see the inner part of you and I'm I'm willing to work with some things but I just so I'm trying to balance my be self-aware as a woman right because I don't want to be the type of woman that takes no accountability for my part in the in this problem <laughs> But also, right. I, I do have moments where I'm like, okay, I mean, I, I think I'm a great cat. Okay, so you, here's another, uh, my assistant and I were just talking about this today, that as you heal and as you become more self-aware, you don't realize it but this is making your potential partners slimmer and slimmer because you're becoming self-aware, you're healing, you're now aware of other people's issues and the issue you really don't want to deal with. Like, wait a minute, 
I've been working through that on my own. I finally got to a good space for myself. I'm not really like trying to tackle your trauma and you ain't even dealing with it, right? So it's like, whereas before, if you both, if you broken, you can go date a bunch of, there's a lot of broken, hurt people. You And if you're not vetting off of that, then you got a lot of potential people to date. <laughs> but the more you heal and the more you go up and Kish Israel said it's lonely at the top. It like and, and and that has nothing to do with money, nothing to do with looks, nothing to do with all the other stuff that about compatibility. That's simply about emotional self-awareness, emotional intelligence, it's about mental health, it's about doing the work, it's about your commitment to self-actualization and self-awareness. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Where are all these men at? <sighs> that has, and that's before you take anything else into account. Yeah. Emotional and spiritual well-being, emotional and spiritual accountability to say, I don't want to let you destroy me by me loving you. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many situations. Hey are in the inbox and the questions and the people in my inbox and the people I know in my real life that yeah, I'm sitting back and it's just these constant situations with unhealed men. Mm. And the women are sitting here like, is this really what I've done all this work for to get to this point where I'm realizing I'm in a whole marriage or a whole relationship with a broken man and I've now what do I do? Yeah. When they're unwilling to do the deeper work, when they're unwilling to, to work on the self, unwilling to even be accountable and responsible. Mm. So Rebecca, what do you, should, should we just, do you think it's more like a way of like trust Holy Spirit and just do your work and just be open for love? Or is there something that like we as women need to be, is there some in there is there some way that i i could say okay just try to find someone willing to do that part of it because that's such a big part and then maybe I, that's i think that's the most that you can ask for in 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 2022 modern relationships someone who's actually on their healing path and doing their work and pursuing it and owning their ish that's about the most that you could really ask for in a partner because we're just beginning, especially if you want to be married to a black man. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we're just now coming into culture that is beginning to hold black men accountable to heal. You know, we're seeing more movement around culture and awareness around black men healing, you know, dot com. Uh, blacktherapy.com black men there you know you, we're seeing more momentum in these areas and accountability um, but does it mean that there is a multitude of black men that are getting vulnerable and getting real and facing it that's no we're not there yet and we're also in the middle of a relationship revolution where women like like I say, taking money and all that stuff just off the table, but talking about women like yourself who are doing the work and are more emotionally aware and emotionally healthy and mentally healthy, that's, that's new. Like, this is all new. This is all a lot of change. Um, women didn't used to even be in a position to be able to say, I want to be with a healthy man because you needed to be with a man for financial security. So you, our grandmothers were in toxic, abusive relationships because they had to feed their children, you know, and now we get to say, I want to be with a man who's healthy. I want to be with a man who's not toxic, not abusive, not a liar, not a cheater, not a, you know, we want these things in a man. But we didn't we didn't really have that as an, an option, you know, two generations ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I do want that. I want to because I, if I have to have a family with a person who's going to be somebody's daddy, <laughs> 
you know, and then I want to make sure that I'm going to be in the right hands as well. And I now I will say this. I will say this. You're going to have to kind of go ahead and start moving in the direction of dating marriage, true marriage potential men. Okay. You need to do that in this next couple years. Why am I saying that? Because men are, as the men are getting older, a lot of the time it's not getting better. Okay. Right? If you, this, okay, so you, real talk, okay? It's more likely you're going to meet a good man that you influence him to start focusing on his mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Okay. A good man, good heart, good person, but just has not been in around any of the culture or has any role models that have taught him to focus on mental health, therapy, emotional well-being and emotional self-awareness. So you will be, it's women that lead in this area. Okay. So we tend to lead in this area. It's more likely you meet a good man who you say, hey, it kind of seems like you have, you're hurting in some of these areas. Like you need some work. And the younger he is when you meet him, if you're 37 and he's 39, and, and the younger he is when you make that, that influence, when you begin to put that influence on him, the better it is because he doesn't have another 10 or 15 years of toxic baggage and experiences because mm. he's 46 and he's 50. And now it's just, there's been now so much and he hasn't been, he hasn't learned to heal and deal with things. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, I, I do. It, I think you have to be on the lookout and pray, you know, God, I need a good man. I will help in that area. I'm willing to lead a little bit in those areas to help him be who he needs to be as a husband and a, and a potential father of my children. Okay. And I am. I am. And this, I'm so glad to be talking to you, Rebecca, because I, I listen to a lot of your stuff, but this is, I do feel like a release spiritually to be able to talk more about these things and just to be honest with where I am completely 100%. Yeah. And so, you know, I want to make sure that like, I'm okay with just saying like, and I don't see anything wrong with us wanting marriages. Like there's- No. That's legacy. Nothing right? wrong with wanting marriage. I, I just, my warning is that Women still want marriage because our mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers, blah, 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 were married. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, if we knew the truth of those relationships, most of them, we wouldn't want to be married. Mm. So we go into marriage with very idealistic, fairy tale, naive expectations. Mm -hmm. And we're not really prepared for what we confront and deal with in marriage because it doesn't fit the standards that we now have as women who are more empowered and more independent. Mm. And it is a hard road because you are dealing with a lot of the same stuff that your grandmother and great grandmother were dealing with, but they just didn't have the choice. We do. Mm. It's not, marriage is not what everyone seems to think is cracked up to be. Yeah. I mean, I think you can have these really great examples of marriage that you can see in certain people. But I said something earlier in my video today where I talked about the quality of relationships is directly related to the quality of these individuals. The quality of individuals is directly related to how much trauma and pain they've experienced and then how much they're healed. So that's directly related to someone's childhood. Mm -hmm. In the black community, we're dealing with a higher rate of pain and trauma and the lack of fathers and broken homes and abuse. So how many of our black men really truly have really good childhoods? Mm. But wait, so Rebecca, how do you know, like, the foundational principles of a, the good man? When you say a good heart, is it like you just, 
can sense that his his intentions are good for everybody is it like you pay attention to his actions how she treats people how he actually engages his values his morals his behavior right his kindness loving kindness is a representation of having a call after god right a heart after god um so it's behavior, not words. It's actions that show you who someone is. Um, but at the end of the day, one of the biggest issues you have to pay attention to is how much pain has someone gone through? How much conditioning or programming is there around dysfunction, trauma, in their life, how much unhealed issues is there? Because people, there are different levels of pain and issues. Some people haven't been through so much. Listen to what they talk about. If someone has been through a lot more, they sure enough better be down for some therapy and better be down for healing work and be very open and accountable to take responsibility for their ish. Because if not, it's not going anywhere. Haley, wait. Megan said, um, I'm kind of thinking twice about my boo now. Like, wait a minute. We're the way Rebecca. I mean, it's some things to consider. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Just paying attention to the behavior. Like, I love the fruits of the spirit. Sorry, my dog. Chestnut. Shh. <laughs> my dog's going crazy. Um, Just like the fruits of the spirit and watching like how they live those out. Right. Okay. And when you see red flags or you see inconsistencies don't excuse them away half the problem is not that we don't often see things it's that we don't ask enough questions we don't dig deep enough we don't wait long enough we move in or we set our mind on where this is going you know six months into something so the other six months to a year that you're still dating them your mind's already made up that they're the one so then as red flags and things are happening the inconsistencies and things are not adding up it's like you're excusing them you're you're like oh but that's only because he's been hurt oh but that's only because church hurt oh that's only because of his ex or that's only because you see what I'm saying? And then you can't heal what you deny. So if you just skate over those things and there's no accountability, it's in the relationship, it's going to be in your marriage, it's unhealed and it's unaddressed. Yeah, that's really good. I, that's the major key for me because sometimes I'll be giving too many people, way too many people the benefit of the doubt. I'm a, and I'm going to stop. <laughs> Those are the things that come back around and bite you in the butt. And here's my other point. A man needs purpose. A man needs a greater a, a, a passion. He needs focus. He needs productivity. He needs a reason why he wakes up in the morning and go whatever it is that's motivating him in his life. He needs his own purpose his own passions his own interests a man without his own purpose a man without his own interests and passions is a man who can get bored a man who can cheat a man who because a man with too much time on his hands is not cool yeah that makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> you got a good heart. You got good family values. You love God and you work real hard and you're focused on always executing to reach a goal. That is a good recipe in a man. Yeah. Um, well, I feel very, really, I feel very, very empowered. Okay, good. Thank you, sweetheart, for coming on. I'm trying to look for my little stylist so I can do my phone. I can't see it. Yes. Anyway. Oh, for having it. Rebecca, I appreciate you. You're that. welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Love you. Blessings in abundance, sweetheart. Okay. Bye. I don't know how to kick my Bye-bye. There's a little X that you hit in the corner.
Oh, okay. You hit the X. Okay, wonderful. Bye. Bye-bye. Weight loss on steroids says, what about men who play video games? I ain't got time for no grown man to be playing no video games. I'm telling you right now, I know it's a big thing. It's just not a fit for me. Now, some of you might think that's just his hobby. And I know there's, you know, some really, I, I heard there's really, really great, you know, pastors and spiritual guys and really great guys who do gaming and all of that. But it's just not my thing. Like, I can't see being with somebody who's about to be on a video game seven hours a night doing like when that could be productive to build businesses legacy i mean that's just a lot of a lot of hobby time a lot of entertainment time no night uh yeah she was the first caller now you're the second all right i'm gonna try can you request to be on naya let's see if i can pull you up and that's not it i gotta find your name again naya N-Y-A-A-A. -A -A. Uh, you're not coming up. Are you able to hit the little button, Naya, to request to join? Oh, here we go. Go live with Naya. I sent a request, Naya. Who's sending me all the hearts? Thank you, guys. You're so sweet. Naya, did you see my request? There she comes. Hi, Naya. Can you see me? I can see you. I remember you from the other day. Yeah, hold on. Let me see. Oh, sorry, the top zoom is different. Like, I was hoping I didn't miss the call. Um, I can't see you. I can see you. It's like, can you see me? No. I can okay. see you. We see you. We can hear you and see you, okay? Okay. Okay, can you see me? Yep. Okay. Okay, Naya, you wrote me and you said you had bought the heartbreak course, you were trying to get in it, you were having these problems, mm -hmm. but in the meantime, you sent me a question, right? Yep. And you said, hi, Auntie, I'm a young woman in my early 20s. I'm emailing you today because I'm having trouble accessing my course, my heartbreak detox, um, because Lord knows I need it. I left the man that I love because he didn't want me and was basically settling for me, and I know I deserve better. Although I don't love myself, I knew deep down this is not what I deserve. So I had to have the strength to leave and choose myself. Okay, so you're saying, so what, how long were you dating him, Naya? Um, you sound robotic. I had to go outside. Hold on. But, um, so basically I met this man online. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you, but I can't see you anymore. Uh oh, I'm losing you, Naya. It's spinning. I think she's moving around. We're losing her. I don't know what happened. Yeah, somebody says, proud of you, Naya, for leaving. Yes. Yes, because she's young, she's in her early 20s. I don't know what happened. We lost you. Your connection went out, Naya. I think you moved or you went somewhere and he had a dead spot and your internet went out. So, Naya, I will say this, sweetheart. Um, yes, it was the, I'm so proud of you for leaving. Um, let me see. Naya? Hello? Hi. Okay, you went outside? Yep. I'm so proud of you for leaving, okay? You. Because you're so young, sweetheart, and most young girls will stay in situations like that, and it will destroy you. 
it'll break you down. You'll lose yourself. You, you lose all your self-esteem. Like you said, you said that, you know, I don't love myself, but I do know I deserve better than this. You knew you deserve better than that. So tell me this, what, what is at the root of why you don't love yourself? You know, like my mom never, you know, I wish I had a mom like you, you know, she never taught yeah. me how to And she was chasing men and she didn't love herself, it was just a hot mess. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't have anybody to love you and teach you how to love yourself. Yeah. And so you're now responsible for teaching yourself how to love you. Mm hmm. Yep. I'm and, 20 years. and also, I don't, and, have any, I don't have my family in my life either. You know, like my mom. Where's your, where's your family? Well, my mom, she's, you know, she's not stable mentally. She, um, is basically hooked off of drugs. My dad's on alcohol. So, okay. Yeah. So basically, so, I been myself. you've been raising yourself. Basically, all my life. Even I remember, like, I grew up a lot of siblings. I have eight siblings. So oh, wow. Parents, I basically always had to be a mother figure. That's why, like, I'm only 20, but I'm very mature for my age because I had to be, you know? Yeah. You've been raising your siblings. Yes, but now they live with, like, foster care or whatever. I see them sometimes, but, like, um, mm -hmm. basically, I a young age, cook, clean, and all this other stuff. This is why yeah. I'm, really, I'm 20. Like a lot of people, I want kids. I'm like, mm, not really, because you know, I always had to raise my siblings. So, so, yeah, sweetheart, you have been through so much, mm -hmm. so much. Well, so, what? No, say that again. This sorry for interrupting. Um, this is why I could relate so much to your videos because, like, even though I'm young, I've been through a lot of stuff at a young age. You know? Yeah. Where do you live, honey? Now I live in um, Illinois. So. Okay. so this is what we're going to do. Ashley, uh, please make sure that Naya gets into the work master class on a scholarship. You're not, you need more than just the heartbreak course, sweetheart. You can start with that. You already own that. We'll make sure you get into that. But we're going to give you our work master class because it's a deeper level healing course mm -hmm. to really help you learn how to love yourself and help you learn how t the spiritual practices around how to really heal your heart and your mind because it's going to take a lot of spiritual and it's going to take a lot of self-discipline okay yeah. a, a lot I'm also in therapy right now too, because like if I have kids, you know, like I don't want to project that that onto them. Basically, what my mom did. To me. Right, you already in therapy, baby. You only twenty. Listen, you already light years ahead, light years ahead of so many people twice your age. I know you've been through so much, so much, but. I'm proud of you for even having the awareness that you need help and that you're, you're trying to do this work. Like I'm so proud of you that you are so young and you even have the wherewithal to even understand this is what I need to do for me. You're right. You're very mature, but I, I want you to focus on yourself. Okay. Focus on yourself. Don't date. Do not date, okay? Leave boys alone. Because with your background and everything you've got to heal, you got to leave men alone. Okay. Because right now in the state you're in and everything you're coming out of, you'll pick the wrong men. The wrong men will pick you, okay? Mm -hmm. The wrong men. So you, you have to do this healing work so you will only allow the good men into your life, okay? Right now, don't even trust yourself with men. Don't even, Miss Rebecca said, I got to leave boys alone because I am not ready to be with no dumb boys, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Like right now at your age, honey, these men, young boys are young, dumb, and full of cum. That that's all it is. They they just one big hormone. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Don't trust them trying to get in your pants. Don't trust them trying to, you know, 
say everything that you want to hear, right? It, it will just be more trauma, more issues, more pain, just like this thing you're coming out of right now. Baby, you can't go through a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. You need time to heal, okay? And if I, remember, I was a... Go ahead. What are you going to say? I remember you made a video. You said you don't need a man. You need healing. And I could relate to that much. You know? Basically what yeah. you're saying. Exactly. And baby, if I was in front of you right now, I would give you the biggest hug and pray over you. Prayers of protection, prayers of peace, prayers of healing. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to pray. Okay. Pause. Say it again. I'm going to close my eyes while you pray. So. Okay, I'm going to pray, baby. God, we thank you for Naya. We thank you for her confidence and her courage to come on this call this evening. God, I thank you for her reaching out. God, we honor her faith and her love of self to even do this work, to be in therapy, to work in these master classes, these healing courses, to work on herself. We pray protection over her life. God, I come against every attack. I come against every distraction. I come against every enemy that would come to destroy her, to discourage her, to break her down. God, we come against anything and anybody that would interrupt her healing and coming into connection and alignment with you, coming into her full potential as a beautiful young woman who deserves every wonderful and beautiful thing that this life has to give. We cover her even now. Protection, God. Angels dispatch round about her to protect her as she moves forward. I speak abundance. I speak life. I speak purpose. God, I speak holy anointing over her life. I speak confidence and peace that she is going to be an example of a rose that has grown out of the concrete that she can thrive and heal no matter the circumstances, no matter the statistics, God. We bless her, encourage her, and speak life and abundance over her. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all, our children need help. Our young people need help. Ashley, make sure she gets the work master class. I know she went off. Make sure she gets the work master class. The, the uh, heartbreak course is not for her. That's why she's not working, why we couldn't get her in, why she had to email us is so she could connect with us to make sure we get her deeper and more consistent help. Okay. All right, guys, listen. I love you guys. Make sure you get the work master class. It is 40% off right now with the code HEAL. 40% off with the code HEAL. The link is in, excuse me, in my bio. Make sure you're getting therapy. Make sure in con with combined with that, you're doing your spiritual healing work. That is what the work master class is for. Naya, it's powerful. It's amazing. You're going to love it, sweetheart. Okay. I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. We thank you. I thank you for your participation. You're welcome. You're welcome, Megan. Yes, the work master class is what I recommended for her, uh, Shay Shay. Um, that, there's a link in my bio and it's 40% off with the code HEAL. HEAL. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Blessings in abundance. Mm -hmm. All right, I will talk to you guys soon and I'll see you next week for the live show. Uh, coaches, don't forget, we have our monthly L uh, live Q&A tomorrow morning for all of the coaches, all of my certified abundant life coaches. We have our live Q&A tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, for our roundup monthly um, call. All right, I love you guys. Mwah. Talk to you soon.